Let us pray. Startle us, O God, with your truth. We've come to this place this morning eager for a word of hope and compassion and love. So silence in us now every voice but your own and speak your word to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's gospel contains some of the most beloved words our Savior spoke. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oftentimes, these, we take these comforting words out of the rest of what Jesus was talking about because, truth be told, they don't really seem to fit in with the beginning of today's gospel. The first part of this gospel starts out with Jesus talking about children playing music and no one dances. And then he said that children change their tune to a dirge, but then no one grieves. Jesus tells the crowd that this describes how people treated himself and John the Baptist. Pastor T.J. Tetzloff writes, One is a bug-eating, isolated rustic. The other enjoys celebration and making wine in, at weddings. One lives in wild, isolating places, while the other surrounds himself with people and travels to other cities. John and Jesus are dramatically different people, one rough and uncouth, the other accepting hospitality. Each implores their followers to repent and turn back to God. Yet for both John and Jesus, their lifestyles were used as an excuse to reject their message. It might not matter if you're an isolated rustic like John or outgoing like Jesus, if the crowd doesn't like what you're saying, then they'll come up with a reason not to listen." End quote. At times it seems there was no pleasing the people. They couldn't or wouldn't recognize the truth that was right in front of them. They would believe what they wanted regardless of what Jesus or John the Baptist said. To what will I compare this generation, Jesus said. It was beyond frustrating for Jesus that people had chosen to be blind to the reality around them and to the truth of Jesus' message of repentance and love and mercy and justice. They didn't want to hear what Jesus had to say, even though he brought them words of eternal life. What happens because Jesus refused, because people refused to hear the truth is that they carried unnecessary burdens that weigh them down and keep them from living a life of joy and freedom, the very things that we crave, and the very life God created us to live. In the movie Cars 2, the sequel to the original Cars movie, not nearly as good, but it had its moments. The main character in Cars was a shiny red sports car named Lightning McQueen. And the main character in Cars 2 is McQueen's best friend, Tow Mater, a tow truck. Mater is quite the opposite of McQueen. Mater is rusty and unsophisticated and quite dented. Well, Mater gets caught up in an international spy adventure and needs to have his appearance changed so that he won't be recognized. He's willing to lose the rust and have a new paint job, but he refuses to have his dents fixed. Mater says that each dent reminds him of one of his adventures, and usually he had those adventures with a good friend. The dents make him imperfect, but they are part of who he is. But Mater was unwilling to change and get rid of those dents, those reminders of what he had been through. He wanted to keep carrying those stories by himself instead of being made new. 
Jesus invites each of us to be made new, to take his yoke upon us and to learn from him. We all come bearing some heavy burden, don't we? Grief, worry, pain, dents of all kinds. Sometimes we are good at hiding those dents, pretending they don't exist, but they're there nonetheless, aren't they? Each one of those hurt places can bring up a memory or fear of losing someone or something dear to us that it takes our very breath away. Because of our fear or anxiety, we refuse to let go of the pain and we carry it with us to the detriment of our health and of the health of those we love. The words that Jesus speaks about his yoke being easy and his burden being light are comforting. But what, what do they mean exactly? What does being yoked with Jesus really mean? T.J. Tetzloff writes, Jesus' statement that his yoke is easy and his burden is light can seem comical or cruel. But if the yoke you, we are wearing feels too hard and the burden is too heavy, then we need to wonder if we've been strapped to the right one. In ancient Palestine, the yoke was carefully adjusted to fit the ox. The load's weight had to rest on the right part of the animal or it could risk getting injured and the work wouldn't get done. A farmer had to adjust the yoke to match the height, weight, and girth of each animal. If the burden you're carrying feels too heavy, then you need to assess what you're carrying." End quote. When we are yoked to Jesus, when we are carrying what we were given to carry and nothing else, then what we are carrying should not feel like a burden. Think about those things in your life that feel so burdensome, those things that are not life-giving. Are they really yours to carry? Are they yours to carry in the ways you are currently carrying them? Is Jesus offering to carry those burdens with you and yet you can't seem to let them go and give them over to Jesus? Come alongside Jesus and let him fit you with only what you are to carry. Jesus does not want you to carry what isn't yours to carry. Let him put his yoke on you to make your burden lighter and easier. Find rest for your souls, my friends, in the tender, loving compassion of our Savior. Amen.